Few details tonight about the tragedy of the Seacorp power capsize. 19 men were on board when the lift boat capsized. Six were rescued, six were found dead, and seven were never found at all, including three from right here in Acadiana. After gathering information over the past year, the National Transportation Safety Board has finally released the details of their investigation into the capsizing. News 10's Britt LaFaso has been combing through the over 8,000 page report from the NTSB. Britt tells us the stories of the men who survived the capsizing and retells the stories of other lift boat captains in the area. She also sheds light into the weather conditions on that tragic night when the Seacorp power capsized. Gathered from the NTSB report is that the crew members on board the Seacorp power did not know the weather. The severe weather conditions coming their way when they left the dock around 6 a.m. on April 13th. The severe thunderstorm that caused 15 feet high waves and 100 mile an hour winds was not reported until around 2 that afternoon. But the crew members on the Seacorp Power never got those weather alerts. They could only gauge how bad this storm would be while looking out to the waters and the sky that afternoon. At 2.27 p.m., the National Weather Service issued a special marine warning for boaters in Port Fushan. They warned boats could sustain damage or capsize. Make sure all on board are wearing life jackets. Return to harbor if possible. Brian Myers, the first mate of the Seacorp Power, explained they never got any alerts that afternoon. He says only when they heard thunder did they realize the storm was coming. Myers says if Captain Dave would have known that the weather was coming, we would have never left that dock. Main crane operator Charlie Scallon said in an interview, the weather got bad while they were out on the water. The Seacorp Power did not have time to jack up above the water before the waves began. The NTSB interviewed the captains of several other lift boats in the area. The captain of the lift boat, Vanessa, says by 3.30 p.m., the wind was over 100 miles an hour and there were 12 to 15 foot seas. Captain Ted Dethu of the lift boat Rockfish said, Never in my wildest dream that I thought that the winds were going to be this strong. I've been working in the Gulf for 44 years now and never experienced anything like this before. Captain Dethu added, I was never the type of person to get scared, but that night I prayed and got scared like I never got scared before. He says the winds jumped from 35 to 100 miles an hour within a couple of minutes. Captain Dethu says he believes his boat would have also capsized if they had not been jacked up above the water. He says, unfortunately, the Seacorp Power was still in the water. The first mate of the Seacorp Power says when their lift boat started to lean, the wind gauge showed 79 miles an hour. He says he never got a chance to look at the wind gauge when the Seacorp Power capsized, as most crew members were in a panic. The night captain, James Gracian, who also survived, explains what it was like to be there when the lift boat capsized. He says, I'm lying there and I'm going, wow, man, it feels like this boat is listening to starboard. It very quickly went to, no, 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 it's not. And then all of a sudden, I said, yeah, it is. We're listening to starboard. I got out of bed and I stood up and it flipped over. He then explains he grabbed the bunk bed he was laying down in as the boat seemed to rip apart. He says he tried to break through a nearby window, though it was like hitting steel. He and another man crawled through the hallway that was already filling up with water in a panic. They finally broke out a window and realized how rough the sea was. He and the other crew member put on life jackets and jumped out of the window. As he floated away, he says the cabin and other areas of the lift boat were almost completely underwater. He says he floated on a mattress for hours in the cold water and huge waves until he was rescued by crew members on a Swiss supply boat. Other crew members who survived say they waited in the water in life jackets waiting to be rescued. The first mate of the Seacorp Power, Brandon Meyer, said he'd been in the water for two hours before he was rescued four miles away from the lift boat. When asked what helped him survive, he said it was luck. Crew members who were rescued by Good Samaritan vessels say they searched for survivors until the next morning. Seven crew members still have not been found. Britt LaFosso, Caleb Boy, News 10.